It has been three weeks since two men were found guilty for the murder of the legendary hip-hop DJ Jam Master J. His family's waited more than two decades for justice. And now in their first television interview since that trial, two of his sons sat down with me to share some personal remembrances about their dad and to finally talk about what that verdict means to them. The two men convicted are his godson mm -hmm. and a longtime friend. Does that give you any sense of end to the story? I feel like this person wasn't even that far from us the whole time. Yeah, I saw him not that long ago at a uh, at a party, and he's interesting. He came up to me and was like, "Yo, I just want you to know I've had nothing to do with that." And he saw the look on our face, because Jesse was with me too, he saw the look on our face, and we were like, well, what are you talking about, you know? And he realized that we didn't know what the word on the street was. TJ and Jesse Mizell were 11 and 7 years old when their father died. Now 33 and 29, they've held his memory close for more than two decades, waiting for some kind of closure as to who killed their dad. What was the hardest part about hearing about the testimony in the case for you? Like Jam Master J dies from drug deal gone wrong. And so that, that's a little difficult reading, but for us, we know what my father stood for. But the narrative right now is that he was selling cocaine yeah. to support his family because mm -hmm. the Run DMC money wasn't coming in the way it had been. Yeah. Right? Yep. How does that sit with you? We strongly believe that that's false. Like, we believe that there obviously that there is money involved and whether that was his money or not it's not like he's selling drugs you know he, so we really feel like it was like his money being taken and being used for to do other things jam master j is also known for buying cars for everyone on the block on christmas when christmas came around three people were getting a toyota you know and like we have a big family like we never longed for anything and then you ultimately decided not to go to the trial itself yeah why sure. why was that why do you want to stay away we keep ourselves out of all of that it's it's all anything that we try to do that has involvement with our father is positive. These days, Jam Master J's legacy lives on in Jesse's cannabis business, honoring their dad's unabashed love of weed, TJ's clothing line that honors their mother, Terry, while he DJs around the world. He also stays in close touch with New York Scratch Academy, the DJ school co-founded by their father. <laughs> to me, this is magic right here. You want to try? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. For our family to be one of the people that started this it was just an amazing feeling so it's a beautiful establishment like we never had turntables in the house you know he kind of kept it the work and the family stuff separately jam master j had no turntables in the house <laughs> nope i remember telling uh, when you come home it's really just like you're not taking calls from home you're not working practicing from home when i come home and chill with the fam his style, his personal style became Run DMC style. Yeah. Right? I'm trying to think of the lyric. Lee on my legs, sneakers on my My dad comes out the crib like with the Levi's and the, and the shell toes and the leather jacket. That's how you guys are going to dress. That's the uniform. And then like run into your like, all right, that, yeah, that kind of transcended through all of entertainment and culture. <laughs> He understood like the power of influence. It's still to this day, it's like the stuff that he did is still translating right now. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, your mom did a hell of a job <laughs> raising you guys. Thank you. Honestly, man. Wow. Her, yeah. What did she have to say about all this? Well, she's from the project, so there's that, a reason why she's not yeah. sitting in this yeah. chair yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Detectives calling her phone. She's like, I don't have information, but do your effing job. Like, this, who do I, do I work for the police? No. Like, yeah. And so when that happens, she's like, finally, someone did their effing job over there. They recall her summoning that same strength to guide her children through the darkest days of their lives. We were on our way to our grandmother's house in Virginia, and um, my mom got the call, whatever. We turned around on the turnpike, went home, and she was like, hey, don't turn on the TV, blah, blah. Obviously, the first thing I do is turn on the TV, and that's the first thing that was on the news. This is a story that I haven't told either. I remember being at the funeral, and I was like, I need to go to the bathroom, and Buster Rhymes is in the bathroom, and I just remember, and in this moment, he was larger than life to me, and he just like put my hand, his hand on me, and I remember, and I was like, it's going to be cool. People remembered my dad in this positive light. I knew it was going to be all right. And just understanding the impact and understanding the way that we had, you know, to kind of carry and continue the legacy is like, oh, okay, wow, this is enormous. It's huge and it's beautiful.
And after his death, Jam Master Jay's wife, Terry, started a not-for-profit in his honor. The Jam Master Jay Foundation gives grants and funds programs for music and art in underserved schools and communities. It's really clear just how grounded and centered these two men are now. I was going to say boys, but now they're men. And a lot of that is attributed, obviously, to their mother. But I was just curious if they talked anything about other influences, you know, in their life, particularly about men, maybe from that community. Interesting. You know what? They describe a very, quote unquote, normal suburban mm -hmm. upbringing, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. um, they're into skateboarding, into snowboarding, into rock, into country into jazz, funk, folk, all kinds of music. So they have a very varied and educated background. And they were, you know, they were removed from the scene where this all went down. Yeah. And they grew up in Virginia. And uh, you see the finished product. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty stable, pretty stable sounding, right? And impressive. Right? <laughs> yeah. It was a great insight, Maurice. That was really good. good. Thank you. Good, thanks.